here to a black flag presentation for our fallen officers. As well, he has um, had a supreme sacrifice in his, his life as a son, as a veteran of foreign war. He was lost in battle. But it's great in these days of anti-police sentiment for someone to step up, come in on their own, and honor us. So without further ado, Mr. Lutz. Thank you. Uh, thanks for being here, guys. It just really means a lot to me, and I'll probably tear up because <clears throat> you'll find out that this isn't really what I do, it's who I am. And so, you know, being here and being able to, to share with you is very important to me. And um, it kind of began uh, with a knock on the door. You know, I got that knock on the door uh, in December of 2005 when two uniform officers, you know, brought me those five very simple words that we regret to inform you. <clears throat> My son had been killed in Iraq. Uh, he was an <coughs> Army PFC in Iraq, mm -hmm. doing his job, trying to make a difference, and he was shot by a sniper, and he just didn't come home. He was married, had two kids, and, and that's a tough place for a parent to be. And it doesn't matter whether you're in military or in public safety, you know, getting a knock on the door for any family is the most devastating news that anyone could ever receive. And so I wanted to know what to do with that, you know, as a dad, you know, how, to, how do you handle that you know, as, a, you know, as a parent? And one of the things that really I wanted to know more than anything is that somebody gave a damn. Uh, was there anybody out there who really cared that he lost his life? And was freedom really that important, you know, to the, the, to the general population, you know, of America? And I began to, to go on that search to find out how we remember, you know, as a nation. And I'll tell you, after about two years and a lot of funerals, I realized that we do a great job honoring our veterans and remembering our active duty and remembering those who are wounded, you know, both physically and emotionally, but we do very little as a nation to remember those that didn't come home because they're kind of a blip, you know, it's a really sad tragedy for the moment, but then months later, a year later, five years later, uh, you tend to forget, and I don't know how that works in, in your community, but I believe it probably is similar. The ones who are still remembering years later are the ones most affected, right? It's your family, the family, uh, that gathers around and embraces you know, the, the, the families and continues to remember. And so after a couple of years of, of just trying to figure out how we remember as Americans, I realized that we didn't. Uh, one thing that comes to mind and everybody throws it at you is, oh, we have Memorial Day, right? Well, we remember our fallen military on Memorial Day. Well, I found out in a recent survey that 80% of Americans don't know why Memorial Day exists. So if 80% of this country doesn't know why we even have Memorial Day, how can we be remembering as a nation the reason we have our freedoms today? And so I wanted to rectify that because in, in visiting families, other Gold Star families, and talking to them, I realized that the one thing they want is their loved one to be back, right? But the, the second most important thing for them is that their loved one not be forgotten, right? That's all they can have. And so they will never, a Gold Star family or a family of, of fallen in any community, the one thing that they can have is remembrance. And so they cling to it because when they, their memories fade in their mind, boy, they really start to feel the pain of, of, of not being able to see their face again or hear their voice, whatever it may be. And so it's so important for us to continue that remembrance. And so in 2008, this was three years later, I thought the best way of giving remembrance to those families, those Gold Star families, was with a national symbol. Everyone has seen the POW MIA flag. We just passed the table with a flag uh, you know, in the lobby there. You know, that flag has become an icon of 
those that were captured or missing. And I thought the best way of reaching the general public was with a symbol, a national symbol, so that when you saw it, it reminded you of the lives given for all of our freedoms, and you wouldn't forget. And so, on Memorial Day of 2008, the Honor and Remember flag was unveiled publicly to be a national symbol recognizing our fallen military. Okay. So. so over the last 10 years, I've been working on making this a nationally recognized symbol and uh, having it uh, adopted as, sta as a state symbol in different states. As I was telling the chief earlier, uh, there's a bill in, in your state house to make this officially a Massachusetts symbol of remembrance for our fallen military. It's in its third reading. Any of you who are involved in, in understanding legislature, you know, that's pretty far along. It's in its third reading, and it just hasn't been called up yet. And so we're waiting. But other than that, it's been officially adopted in 23 states already. So this is now becoming nationally recognized. So over the years, as we've been having this recognized, we've been doing something else very, very important. We've been, we've been recognizing individually the families of our military. And I'll get, and, and guys, you're, I know you're going, all right, Take talking your time. about the military. How many here have served in, in, the, in the military? Thank you. Thank you for your service. Over the course of the last number of years, we've been doing something very special. We've been actually presenting, hand, these are hand-sewn flags to the families, to the Gold Star families across America. And so, this is a personalized version of this flag. And over the last 10 years, we've presented nearly 3,000 flags mm -hmm. to families of every generation. This flag is not for Iraq and Afghanistan. This flag represents every fallen service member in the history of our country, regardless of branch of service, regardless of time period, conflict, war, and regardless of cause of death. This flag covers anyone who died while serving or as a result of serving. So if somehow you left the military and your life was taken, whether it be through disease or by your own hand, by the, by the emotional wounds of war, then this flag would, would cover you and honor you. And we've been presenting flags to those families uh, from all generations, actually all the way back to the revolution. So this has covered um, many, many generations of families. So I share this because over the years, over the years that we've been presenting these flags, I can't tell you that there's a, not a time, not a day, but a time that goes by when someone isn't asking me about police and fire and the public safety community. And it breaks my heart <clears throat> because as a grieving father, I know what loss means. Unexpected loss. We shouldn't be burying our kids. And the last call I received Symbolism is not appropriate. It doesn't matter whether they served in the military or prior or not, but it was not appropriate symbolism. I said then the, then the community would have to accept the gold star and the blue star 
it's just not, it just doesn't work. I said, but just hold that thought. And I just began to pray about it and to just to, you know, try to figure out how this community could be honored in a very unique and special way. Because like the military community, unlike it in some ways, but in the military community, and I don't know if you embody this, this thought or not, that, and those of you that serve know, when you put your name you know, on that dotted line, on that blank check, right, you're, you're saying that that check could be cashed up to and including your very own life. And that's what you're willing to do. Now you may not say that in your community, maybe you do, but you certainly embody it, right? When you sign your name on that, on that application and you're accepted, you know, through the processes of, of, that you go through, you are willing to cash a check or letting someone else cash that check up to and in willing your very own life. And I see it as you do time and time and time again. And so in my mind, you are a selfless, active community protecting our laws and our, our citizenry here at home across this land. And so on the anniversary of 9-11, I thought this last year, I thought it was appropriate that our organization, which is Honor and Remember, built on honoring selfless servants, that it would be appropriate for us to unveil a different flag. And so, the honor and sacrifice flag was created to be a gift to your community and to say specifically something that I couldn't find anywhere uh, in this country. Very unique, with very specific symbolism that could say to all of you, and specifically the families who have lost their loved ones, thank you. And, uh, and offer something that was totally and, and, and completely different in this, in this nation. So I don't have to probably tell you the symbolism behind this, right? I will, just so you know, because some people, some don't know all of the colors, but obviously we have law enforcement blue, you know, at the top. Uh, in the center is a purple color, which is actually called pansy as a color. Now don't take that to the wrong way. But when the fire community is in mourning, purple, this color is their color of mourning. And you'll see it on the ribbons and, and in different displays. Um, the white below is the purity of sacrifice. As I said, you sign that blank check up to and often including your very own life. But look at the badge behind. We have the sheriff's or marshal's badge, you know, in black in the background, representing that service and that community. We have the Maltese cross representing the fire and emergency communities. And then we have the gold shield, which overlays law enforcement really in every category across this nation. And in fire as well, because the badge is used in, in often in public safety in many, many forms. We have a folded flag because a folded flag is handed to the family, right, off the casket you know, and, and given at the memorial. Yeah, eternal flames that we will never forget, uh, the sacrifice and the words below. We will honor them individually and remember their selfless sacrifice. And so as a gift uh, today, you know, and, and I'm so honored that, that you all are here. Uh, I wanted to, to let you know that this flag exists, that it's out there to be personalized and presented to families. It's out there to be flown in, in honor of all that you do. And uh, wanted to leave one uh, with the police chief uh, now as a, as a gift from our organization and an appreciation for all you do and in the sacrifice of your, your very lives. So, Chief, uh, thank you. Oh, thank you.
this is the first police department in our nation. So oh. we've led the way. So this is the first flag of its kind. Of its kind. So we're very humbled and honored that um, you chose us first. So Thank you. we really appreciate you. God bless your son. Right? God bless all of our fallen brothers and sisters. Amen. And this is a tremendous, tremendous gift to the Boston Police Department. So we thank you. We all thank you. Now, <laughs> well, I've been before, I believe in introducing my brothers and sisters. So you can introduce yourselves, go around, starting with you. Sherry Delasio. Yusuf Sevilla. Sevilla. Megan Walsh. Larry Calderoni. Dia Martino Rujo. Pat Monroe. Izzy Marrero. Mini Pedro. Jose Amado. Take a picture. How do you want to?